was made, and then we're good to go. Yeah, that's good. Gotta have it, man. Can't have of uh, can't have the one ear thing. I was like, well, this is gonna drive me batty. You did that for years, by the way. Didn't you just listen? Didn't you have a headset that you only listened to out of one ear for like eight years that we did the show together? Yeah, in oh, fact, no, that's uh, not, there's I one around know. these parts that has that too, and it doesn't bother me oh, if that's the case. Oh, it pisses me off to no end. Well, I can't do it. You need to focus on the now. Mm. I need to focus on multiple things. Yeah. That's our jobs. I need, like, especially when we're on remote, I do not like the double cans over the ears yeah, yeah, because you, get, you need to hear the surroundings. If somebody's yeah. about to say something that is going to be an FCC violation and they sure. need to be escorted away, yeah. all that kind of stuff. It's true. It's true. You know, I was reading right when we came on. By the way, welcome in, friends. Loosey Goosey edition of the cult, uh, show on Alliviations Friday. And it really will be. It always is. It gets looser and looser and sillier and silly, sillier the further removed from football we get because it allows us certain freedoms to just go anywhere we want to go, have any discussion we want to have. And I'd rather enjoy that, by the way. It, it, could, it could be anything we want. Uh, but but uh, I was going through right before the show, minutes before this thing got started, because I've told you this before, and they know it. They know it. Every website knows it. Every ESPN-like show knows it, you know, any of those kinds of things. If you give us a list, we're going to click on it. If you give us a ranking, we're going to click on it. It could be the 10 best plants. Well, I don't, I don't, I've got an opinion about ferns. Let me click on it. You know, like you'll do it. You can't help it. And so I did it, even though I care nothing about Stuart Mandel. You know, in fact, I rather don't don't like him. The 10 best pieces by me. No, Stuart Mandel. That I wouldn't click. No. Okay, you found a list I wouldn't click. But I would be oddly tempted just to see what Stuart thought of his, his work. But uh, see? Yeah. the click yeah. has been made. Yeah. <laughs> so So here you go, man. I clicked on it because it was his post-transfer portal wow, early. Wow, there wow, you go, wow. buddy, on a Friday. Uh, his post-transfer portal top 25 for the 2022 college football season. And I thought, well, it's a top 25 list for college football. It could be, that could be Harry who lives three doors down from me. He could be like, Jeff, I just posted on my Facebook page, my way too early top 20, Harry's two top 25 page. Like, All right, Harry, I'll check it out later. And I would, which is ridiculous. You would. Well, maybe not on Facebook, but if it was somewhere other than that, right? I might. So, I can't help it. I can't help it. You could come in every day. I did another top 25. Oh, God. what is it, Tom? Is it in my inbox? Did you send it to me? I would look at it. So I clicked on it because I'm like a kid at Christmas. I want to see, does anybody, anybody who covers the sport, again, I don't even have to respect the person, anybody who covers the sport and is paid to do so, right? They're, they're working members of the media covering college football. Do they have us in the top 25? Zubin Mahenti could do it that's a toughie would you click on the zubin mahenti top 25 i would, I, I would, I would. <laughs> even I, though their quarterback can't speak english yeah, i need to put them at 12 a lot of people do not know the joke uh that you're referencing but yeah yeah and i was on sports center with him and i uh did a little interview it was the six o'clock one too it was like the big one and i remember hanging up uh thinking i hate that man yeah, I do. I can remember no, that. That's news. Yeah, I do. I remember thinking, <laughs> anyhow. So, bottom line, bottom line, uh, I would tell you that uh, I would click on it. I would. Yeah, bigotry comes in all colors. It, it did. It did. He uh, let it be known. Uh, so, I go through the list just to see. Now, I don't expect, like, I'm not, like, perusing the top ten and going, where are we? I mean, I'm a realist. So I quickly scroll outside of the top 10 just to get, because I don't have, I don't need to read the write-up on freaking uh, Michigan or Notre Dame. I don't need to read that. Uh, you know, I'll scroll through. I'm not that interested in what he has to say. I just want to see the names of the teams. That's all I'm looking at. So I went through here, and sweet Jesus, it just angered me. Tennessee made his top 15. Get, oh. get the hell up out of here with this nonsense. Here we go. Tennessee, okay? So did, uh, uh, you know, Wake Forest, obviously, Kentucky. Wake Forest in the top 15? Uh, Wake Forest is in the top 20. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, here we are. I'm like, okay. All right. There it is. All right. So then Kentucky's there. Minnesota is there. Basketball. Mm -hmm. Cincinnati, Houston, 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> That's a toughie, Tom. I mean, I'm tired of looking around here and seeing Baylor, Ole Miss, Pitt, Tennessee, Arkansas. Ooh, Pitt? Yes. Okay. Wake Forest, Kentucky. Pitt without picket? Yes. Minnesota. I know by law I've got a Minnesota. There you go. Uh, there it is. I'm like, God, dog it. That is just not what we do. Let's go. Let's let's stop the nonsense. The madness has to end. It's just, I'm just vocalizing frustrations. This is not insightful. I don't mean it to be. I'm just getting it off my chest at the start of the show that our, you know, our little dalliance here in the uh, in the land of suck needs to be over. I'm done. I'm done. I'm very patient, more patient than I used to be about almost all things in my life. And, and that includes games, poor play, teams that disappoint. Like my pirates have taught me patience along with my children. I have learned that you have to sometimes just take a step back. In that order. Probably. But it is tough, you know, I mean, because the pirates have been doing that longer. They've been teaching me how to be patient for much longer than my children. My children, I'm required to show patience. I produced them. I made them enter into this space, so I have to have some some grace. Like a Jeff Cameron montage. There they are. Yeah, I have to make sure that I take a step back. If my oldest is, uh, you know, speaking gibberish or resenting me because I actually want him to clean up his room or to take a shower or to pick up that plate and put it in the kitchen or whatever it might be. Uh, I have to show patience. It's a rough morning, huh? <laughs> so, no, I, I you would be surprised. It's one of my favorite things about parenting is when you take a step back and you actually see what your kids, when they get to a certain age, and my kids are both now entering an age that sucks. It's the worst age. Kids, if you're listening, between the ages of 12 and eh, 16, depends on how quickly they mature. But somewhere at boys, anyhow, girls are a lot more mature than boys. But 12 to you know 15 or 16, it's the worst. It's the worst. They, they have to, evolutionarily speaking, they have to push away because soon enough they'll be out on their own. And so they have to push away. And you have to remind yourself of that, Tom, because you want to throw them through a plate glass window. Because it is very frustrating when you say something as simple as, hey, listen, that glass that's been sitting in your room for five days needs to be put in the sink. And they look at you like you're nuts. Like, you, how dare you? I, I like the glass. It's, there's no logical reason that this glass is still sitting here. You drink whatever you had in that glass days ago. Go put it in the kitchen. And they think it's, and they resent you for asking them to put it away. I see the brilliance of this statement. Mm. All right. So the glass is the football program. There we go. Right? Is it half full? Right. And your sons <laughs> yeah. are the hurdles. You can pick your hurdle. Bad recruiting, ACC, uh, administration issues over the last period of time. And you are the fan base in this analogy. Saying, damn it, man. Yeah. This glass needs to be returned to the kitchen, which is the top 25. Brilliant. Brilliant. Well, you get me, Tom. I do. It's been a long time, our partnership and friendship. So, uh, yeah, I'm ready for the glass to be put back in the kitchen. There's no doubt. Even if it is Mandel's kitchen. Yeah, that's correct. Anybody's kitchen. It just can't be in a room, off on its own, in the wilderness, lost, unclean. It has to be fixed. This must be remedied, this situation. So is LSU in Stewart's top 25? At number 25. Okay. At number 25. Opportunity yeah. strikes. Mm-hmm. One and zero oh against number twenty five. Well, I got to tell you, buddy, I'm really, really hoping that um, we we see a trip back to that neighborhood we so enjoy. It's a little bit like uh, the return of the ice cream truck. The sounds off in the distance, the bells, the music, calling your name, reminded you, reminding you. That uh, all at once things were good. There were there were times where you could calmly walk to the kitchen counter or wherever it was. You kept your change, grab your two dollars worth of quarters, meander down the driveway just in time for that ice cream truck to turn the corner. There's Susan. She's reliable. 
every third Wednesday that truck comes by here, and I'm going to get me whatever it was you got. She's turned her life around. <laughs> Did a couple of spells in county. Mm -hmm. It's okay now. Now she's an ice cream truck driver. Plotting her next move. So I just, there it is. Hey, you know, did you get the the push ups with the with the with the candy at the bottom, the the gum? Uh, I loved them. No, I, oh, I, I loved them. I would always get like uh, old school popsicles, um, and I always liked the uh, the freeze pops and freeze the, the pops plastics. Mm -hmm. And then if we if it was the ice uh, ice cream truck person, which they had at the high school like once a week or mm -hmm. once every other week, I would get the Italian ices. Italian ices. Oh yeah, everybody got the Italian ices. Either the lemon or the cherry. I'm on both teams. They're both delicious. I'm, well, there is a divide there with uh, with folks. Folks are wrong. They are. They are. Because they're, they're both, both delicious. delicious. They're both delicious. Even the blueberry's good. Uh, we would, yes, you're right, by the way, the ice cream truck that would come would occasionally have the Italian ices, and we, as a football team, would race over there to try to get them before practice started, if you could. That was the key. Speaking of which, we got something that I'm excited about. It'll happen next week, and I think you guys will like this. I told Tom this already, but this is great. My old teammate and dear friend, now Dr. Tommy Carter, Tom Carter, as he's known to his uh, to others, um, is is uh, he started a new business. Now Tom is a brilliant uh, person. In addition to uh, being an elite athlete, nine years in the National Football League, was uh, a great player at Notre Dame. Uh, he, uh, he he came out early. Uh, ended up, uh, I think he was drafted 13th overall. He's my high school former quarterback, and I've known him since we were in middle school. Great guy. Anyhow, he reached out to me today, and we started talking. And I actually, I should mention this because I'm going to have him on the show, and this is why it's interesting, and it'll be interesting to all of us. And I'm, he's, like I said, he, he's now Dr. Tom Carter. He's brilliant. Charity boxing match? What are we doing? No, 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 no. Uh, <laughs> uh, the Art of Business and Sport, Illuminating the Way, if you go to his website, The New Era of NIL. And the point of this is he, he started a firm, and I, I won't get into all of that. This isn't to promote that per se, but he is an expert on, uh, and he was a former head of the Players Union in the NFL. So this is a really bright guy. And uh, he, he talks, uh, he helps explain NIL and the proper representation players are going to need in the, in the modern world of NIL, how you navigate all that, how you protect yourself, uh, how you get what you got coming to you, if you can, all that stuff. But he's going to break that down, and I'm going to have a long-form conversation with him. I'm going to invite him to sit down, and we're going to just talk, and then we'll break it up and put it on the show. Now, this is interesting because it's a great way to answer a question, and we were discussing this broadly last night with Peter Collins on War Chant TV. Mm -hmm. He's the uh, the chair of the FSU Board of Trustees. He is indeed. And uh, they can't talk at the Board of Trustees about NIL just yet until the loopholes in the state are closed, right? That's they can't on official terms. It's almost like Mike Norvell can talk uh, generally about the 23 recruiting class, but he can't talk about a specific player. Yeah. And one of the things in the general discussion about NIL that came up was representation and knowing what you're signing and understanding Correct. the deals that you're cutting. Mm -hmm. And for a 17 year old or an 18 year old, well, it's a daunting deal. Yeah, yeah. It's a whole, it's a brave new world for them too. One that they shouldn't have really all that much exposure to, but they will with the quickness if they can run the right 40 time and they've got the measurables that go along with said 40 time. So that's interesting that maybe Tommy Carter might be, it sounds like an advocate for uh, the education of the player to make sure that the player knows what the hell they're getting into when they sign an NIL deal to make sure they're not signing their life away. Very much so. And I am really interested to hear him illuminate this for us. And I think it will be a very interesting and insightful conversation. Uh, knowing Tommy the way that I do, uh, I've always been obviously very impressed with who he was as an athlete. He wowed me from the first time I ever saw him because he was the fastest, uh, springiest, twitchiest guy in the room. Every, I mean, it, it, when I met Tommy, he was 5'9", five, 5'10", five, and he could dunk, and he ran like a 4'3", 4'. It was the dumbest thing I ever saw. And it, he went on, obviously, to utilize that skill set to become an NFL football player, defensive back in the league, and all that good stuff. But I always admired him because he was also – uh, an incredible advocate for education. He was a 4.0 student. He was brilliant. He could have gone to Harvard. He was all of those things, right? And yet, he was also that elite level athlete in any sport that he played. And he was elite in track, elite in basketball, elite in football, everything. It was crazy. And you'd never know it to talk to him. Uh, he would never offer up any of that. And he accomplished a ton of things. And so it was funny, as his career progressed in the NFL, I saw him at, and this is a name drop, saw him at William Floyd's wedding. And we were talking there. And even then, and here he was, an NFL player. Open bar? 
It was an open bar. Good. Yeah. yeah. And we were talking. And as we were talking, I asked him, because he's in the NFL at the time, and we're talking. And I'm thinking, this is cool. I get to talk to him. There were a bunch of NFL players there. Because uh, at the time, William was with the San Francisco 49ers. So that was cool. It's better, Yeah, better be an open bar. Well, it was a good time. So I'm talking to Tommy, though. Uh, and as we're talking, I said, uh, you know, I'm asking him questions about the league. I'm asking him questions about preparation. I'm asking him questions about his workouts. I'm asking him all these things that, you know, you got a guy right there who's playing in the league in the moment. You can ask him what practices are like and all that. And then, wow, that conversation is is kind of, you know, going back and forth. And he's telling me, you know, hey, we do this. We never would have done that at Lakewood. You should do this, this, and this. It's a lot of fun. I, I, I started to ask him about other interests beyond football. Does he ever have time to do other things? And he said, well, I want to join the, I, I want to represent the players. He knew even then. He was like, because a lot of guys that I meet in this league and guys that I've played with, they get screwed. They don't know what they're worth. They don't understand how to manage their money. They don't. And he's like, I, I want to be an advocate because he was lucky enough. He came from a family that really emphasized education. And so he was always talking about doing stuff for players who didn't have that. And it doesn't shock me to find out that in the era of NIL, that he would start this company and that he would do that to help educate and represent players. And I just think it's a great chance for us on the Jeff Cameron show and on with war chant to be able to talk about NIL and, and cause he'll know it backwards and forwards already. He'll know everything you can and can't do. He'll know how, where this is probably going. And uh, I, I think it's going to be fascinating. So look for that next week. I just wanted to bring that up. I had that conversation with Tommy this morning and he agreed to come on. So it should be a lot of fun. Sorry, but just an aside. I think I find that fascinating. Hey, it's a Friday. We're talking about lists and then we're talking about the important stuff too. And everything in between. Yeah. Everything in between. Uh, that will be, uh, that'll be fun. It'll be fun to, uh, cause, cause we, I mean, I think he'll go long form. So maybe I'll talk to him for like an hour and he can probably illuminate for others, uh, not just about NIL, but how I really kind of propelled him forward in his career. So that way somebody else is advocating on my behalf. Yeah. Well, you make sure to ask him what he would have <laughs> gotten, uh, if he went, uh, in the air, in the era of the NIL to Notre Dame. Yeah. What yeah. would he have commanded? Has he ever thought about what value based upon today's dollars? Well, that's the, one of the first questions I'm going to ask him because he's so quiet. Now, I, not in the radio setting, but he was such a quiet guy. I mean, he was not brash. William was brash. Tommy was not. Um, he just quietly went about his business. I don't know what he would have commanded. I don't know that. I don't know. I don't know. Does it behoove you to be over the top or to be reserved and conservative? Well, he, he would have a great perspective <laughs> on that. I think he's probably going to tell you that uh, it would behoove you to be yourself. Jeff Cameron, show 93.3 Real Talk Radio, War Chant TV. Be had every night at the Corner Pocket. Take home prizes on Trivia Tuesdays and Beer Bingo Thursdays. And kickstart your weekend with Martini Fridays. Plus, happy hour runs every weekday and game day specials every time the Knolls take the field. Watch all the best games at the Corner Pocket's Vegas Wall. Featuring 560 inches of flat screen TV heaven. Oh, really? The best food, the best drinks, and the best place to watch all the games. Tallahassee loves the Corner Pocket. Are you stumped on who to call for fast and affordable crane and tree service? Deep South Tree Service is a cut above the rest. They go out on a limb for their customers. With the largest crane in the Big Bend area, no job is too tall, no job is too small. Call Rob for a free quote today. 850-877-TREE. That's 877-8733. Deep South Tree Service. Our roots run deep. While other gun stores come and go, Ren Hills Arms remains Tallahassee's go-to local gun store for all your firearms needs. At Red Hills Arms, they're right on target. Stop by today and get welcomed in my family. This is Dr. James Ryan Finn from Finn Chiropractic. The number one myth about chiropractic is you don't have to take care of your spine until it hurts. Most patients come in with symptoms, neck pain, back pain, headaches. Those are not the cause of your problem. That's the result of your problem. So unmask the cause of your problem at Finn Chiropractic through the Phenomenal Health Examination. So if you're a loved one or having neck pain, back pain, or headaches, don't mask the symptom. Unmask the cause at Finn Chiropractic because your chiropractor loves you and there's nothing you can do about it. Hi, Taco. Hey, champ. How you doing? How you doing? Pull up a pillow. Haven't seen you in a couple of days. Hey. Something's different about you. That's right. My people took me to Tally Spay, the affordable spay and neuter clinic on West Tennessee. Tally Spay? Isn't that the place where they... Mm. Yeah, they're a low-cost, high-volume spay-neuter clinic. So you're saying you've had some work done? I did. 
you'd think I'd be depressed, but truth is, I don't even miss them. If anything, I feel more calm. I don't feel like I have to run around looking for company, and my people can leave me alone with the couch cushions. Hey, I can stop anytime I want. Tally Spay, a low-cost, high-volume spay-neuter clinic open to the public, serving Tallahassee and the surrounding areas. Tally Spay. For more information and to schedule a same-day surgery and pickup, go to tallyspay.com. That's tallyspay.com. Hi, this is Justin Colvin, founder of the Medicare Help Desk. I routinely speak to seniors who are overwhelmed by the multitude of coverage options available to them. That's why I created the Medicare Help Desk radio show. Tune in every Sunday at 1130 a.m. where I provide clear answers to all your questions about Medicare. If you weren't the owner of Gordo's and all those wonderful restaurants, Eddie, what would you be doing? You know, I, I think I'd want to be a, want to be, I don't know what I'd want to be, a boat captain or a cowboy. You know how to use a, a lasso? No. You'd have to do that if you were a cowboy. Yeah, but I've never even been on a horse. It's not my place to be on a horse. I agree. And the horse thanks you. Gordo's bringing the flavor and flair of Cuban food to Tallahassee since 1996. We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com. The Jeff Cameron Show, brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness. Two Tallahassee locations, Midtown on Thomasville Road, and Northside in the Village Common Shopping Center. Online at orangetheoryfitness.com. golf buddy we got rained out today you and i were going to be playing together at uh, capital city country club and the rain police came in here and just ruined it i woke up this morning 5 48 oh all right opened my eyes looked at the ceiling gathered myself is it a nice ceiling it's plain it's just a white ceiling Nothing. There's no magnificent like, about it. There's no crack or paint chip that you stare at specifically. There's not a spot. No, there's a spot in my curtains when I wake up in the middle of the night, which is every freaking night at around three twenty ish, and uh, I look outside that little tiniest space in the curtain because I like to see the way the moon shines. I can tell what time it is. I wake up so frequently in the middle of the night that when I open my eyes, I can tell you exactly what time it is based on where the moon sits through that little space in the curtains. I'm usually good to guess it within four to five minutes. I've never like 10, 15 minutes off. I can tell you just, but I sit there, gather, look. Yeah, it's about 320. I'll look 318. Okay. At least you derive some satisfaction out of a middle of the night wake up. I've played a game with it. Yeah. I've gotten good at it. Oh, on the nights that I nail it on the number, I want to wake my wife up and go, got it right on the number. 317, baby. Uh, just shake her. Hey. hey, hey, I nailed it. Right on there. Got Jesus, it. Jesus, what? Yeah, well, nothing. I got it. It's 317. Nailed it. Promise you. So, yeah, anyhow, uh, you know, insomnia hurts. But I uh, I got up, and I was like, oh, Tom and I are playing golf today. And then I heard, I was a like, son of a. And that was the sound of drizzle, by the way, if you couldn't tell. So that's what I heard faintly in the distance. And I was like, God, dog it. Calmly walked out to the kitchen. Dogs looked at me like, hey, what are you doing? Got a glass of water. Walked back in, jumped in the shower. What are you going to do? So here we go. You embraced it. I did. Uh, well, yeah, there's nothing you could do about it at that point. I just embraced got, me as my son. I said, damn it. Time to make some sandwiches. So that's how that went. Uh, yesterday on the program, in the second hour of the show, Simply fantastic work by myself and Tom. And we were having a conversation about uh, where's Mike? Like, what would what would make Mike, that would be Coach Norbell, whom we both like and think is a good coach, what would make him a dead man walking? 
what kind of season would make him a dead man walking? In other words, when would he enter and firmly, firmly plant his cheeks on the seat that is hot? Oh, all right. <laughs> My biscuits are burning. Yeah, a little warm in here. And we said certainly anything below eight wins, seven and five, would make it a little toasty cheeky. So we thought that would not be a good situation, like seven and five. But then I said to you, and this was this is what I was presenting to you. I said seven and five. You know, they're not firing Mike next year. Financially, they can't really afford to do it, and they don't want to do it. And I think it would be unwise, short of a catastrophe. Well, if they go out and go three and nine, you got to tell them to have a good day. There's no doubt about that. But if he's reasonable, if they're six and six or seven and five or whatever, he's not getting fired, and that's fine. But what my contention was is that that wouldn't be good enough to lure a good class, and so you'd be pretty much a dead man walking. You wouldn't have enough bullets in the chamber to survive the following season. You wouldn't you wouldn't make it. And then, therefore, in essence, we would just be playing out the string together, now wouldn't we? It would be a sort of wink, wink, nod, nod. Like, the best of luck, Mike, but uh, we both know time is short. Until, unless there's a movie that Disney Plus would pick up in a couple of years. Yeah. Miraculous turnaround. So. I guess uh, that got us thinking a little bit about, okay, well, <laughs> let's avoid that. I don't want to start over. Nobody does. I'm not rooting for that. And I was thinking about the reason for it would be that if you go seven and five, you're not going to impress enough of the difference makers in the recruiting classes to change, continue to flip your roster in a, in a way that can get you to where you need to go. And so therefore you're just playing out the string. Well, Interestingly enough, I mean, that elicited a lot of response that a lot of people were like, whoa, whoa. Um, okay. And we were going to, everybody has an opinion about that. But Ryan, uh, correctly here in the chat notes, I think where NIL is going with super donors at UT, Bama, Texas A&M, FSU will be happy to be Oklahoma State type good. Going to be tough to envision landing national championship caliber players. Okay. So, the reason I uh, click on that and, and get excited about that and want to talk about that is I think he's 100% correct. And I would like to know where the mind, the collective fan base mindset is on what is now after these years of suck and mediocrity, what is now a good season because unwaveringly. So my approach to Florida state football, all these years on the Jeff Cameron show was to talk about what I would say, I remember early on, people didn't get it, and then they began to get it. I would say, if this team, if I if, if I referenced a player or a team, and I would say, grammatically incorrect as it is, they're not any good. I would say things like that. I'd be like, look, they're not any good. And people would go, well, they're nine and three. I'm like, they're not any good. Because the standard was the standard. The standard was 10 wins plus and or national championship caliber teams. Year in, year out, that's the goal, right? Like FSU baseball's goal is to get to Omaha every year. Now, you can say that's unrealistic, it's unlikely to happen, but that's the goal. That's the standard, is to, to be a, a, a team good enough that, to get to the College World Series, knowing that along the way, losses happen in baseball, it's a series, all that stuff, but that's what you better be, you better look like that. You better look like a team capable of that. And if you don't, it's fair to criticize them because that's their own standard. And I thought for the longest time, for Florida State football, the standard is the standard. You're a 10-win operation. You should compete for an ACC championship every year. There's only two other teams in the conference that are any good. And then, you know, we go consistently, and we would go through this, right? I wonder, has that moved? Has that bar been lowered? Is it now? Because if you're willing to agree, if you accept what Ryan said here about with NIL being what it is now and with these programs that have more money than anybody else could dream of having, certainly not Florida State, right? Well, you don't have Texas A&M money. We don't have Texas money. We don't have Notre Dame money. We don't have Alabama money, Georgia money. We don't, and it's most unfortunate. So what's realistic now? What's fair to expect now? What would you be willing to accept now? Because I dare say the answer to that question is what we would have previous said to be nothing but mediocrity and or they're not any good. Yeah, but are you saying that on a permanent basis that you are permanently moving the bar, or that we uh, have shifted our goals for the that's the question the foreseeable it? term? That is the question. Because to me, it sounds like you're permanently moving the bar until we find a way to infuse a hell of a lot more money into this program and compete with the 
elite teams in the country for the best players, the answer would have to be, realistically, yes. I think we can agree on the next two to three years, uh, 10 wins being a, a very successful season here at Florida State, bowl or not included, right? Think, you know, 10 yeah, and two yeah. or 10 and three, whatever it is, however you get there, that's a successful season, but that sets the table to do bigger and better things. Or so, maybe it doesn't. Right. That's where we would probably part ways. I'm not, I'm not telling you anything definitive today. I'm not saying that in perpetuity, Florida State would do good to go nine and three in the regular season. That eight and four, we shouldn't scoff at. We should say, hey, nice year. We're going bowling. Had a big win somewhere in there. If you got eight or nine wins, you probably beat somebody that you shouldn't have. Probably beat somebody that was ranked. But that is an entirely different standard yeah. than the vast majority of Florida State fans listening to this program today would be willing to accept. That is an entirely different standard. If we hold them to the standards of just seven, eight years ago, th that would be unacceptable. I remember being pissed off when we won the Orange Bowl over sorry, sorry ass Northern Illinois. I remember walking out of that stadium being like, come on, Jimbo, man. We, this should have been a better year. We're better than this. And we had just won the Orange Bowl in 10 games. Right, yeah. So the uh, season that came with an Orange Bowl more recently, 2016, where you go, I think it was 10 and 3, you beat Michigan in the Orange Bowl. That would be considered the pinnacle of success for the long term. See, I, I feel like that's an argument that I'm looking forward to having once we get to a place when we can have that argument. We are not there yet. We're not there. And, and Jamie's on the chat and others who are just maybe joining in. I'm not saying I expect them to win 10 games next year. In fact, we just did W's and L's two days ago. I picked them to win seven games. So. And, and listen, that could change. I mean, that's some of that's fun, some of that's tongue in cheek, tongue in cheek. So, but but anyhow, the point is, no, I don't think they're, that they're going to make this magical leap from having a sub five hundred season to ten wins next year. They're not going to do that. But I am asking the larger question: Have we shifted and lowered expectations to where, in essence, hey, you win nine games like Oklahoma State, you're like, oh, all right, guys, we're a nine win team, and that depresses me. And I want to know collectively like i said as a fan base as a passionate fan base who cares deeply who's seen success who most recently watched a team win a national championship less than a decade ago so you know that that if you're realists if you're if you're if you're taking a look at what's going on here and the way these recruiting classes are being put together those with deeper pockets the upper echelon players that we no longer have access to is it realistic to expect anything more than those kinds of seasons? And that means, by definition, we're no longer Florida State. We're no longer the program that has earned its seat at the table of the best of the best that play college football. I thought this is supposed to be a loosey-goosey. It is loosey-goosey. It's a conversation. It's okay to say. It's, it's like we have to have these debates and nuanced conversations about what is realistic to expect as a Florida State fan. Well, I think that we're shooting for an Oklahoma State type season in the near term, and that is at least for the next two to three years. That I think that's a coping mechanism, and you're smart to do it. What do you mean? I think because you, yes, I agree. Obviously, the next step is you got to win eight, nine games. That's an Oklahoma State like season. But I'm asking the bigger question: Can they do much better than that anytime soon? Yeah. I, well, here's the reason I, I would focus only on the next two to three years. I believe that there is going to be a wholesale change to the way college football Aha. operates as we know it. Okay. And I call that I've called it before as I believe we're getting a get out of jail free card here pretty soon. And by pretty soon, I mean in the next five years. Well, thank God. Yeah. Because otherwise, what I'm saying and that nobody wants to hear is that nine wins is about the best you can hope for around here with the way things, with the way classes are put together now. But, our our yeah. access to those players is no more. Uh, I agree. There's only so many seats at those tables for the now, but the problem is that the Big Ten and the SEC, the yes. other schools not named the aforementioned Bama, Texas, a whatever, those schools can kick in dollars that we frankly just won't be able to. Uh, at least not for multiple players. Maybe we get a player yes, or yes, two. Yes, there's an outlier. Maybe, maybe. But listen, we couldn't even get an all-time Hall of Fame legacy son. We couldn't even get him. Couldn't even get a seat at the table with him. And and look, any of those great players that you would want that can change your fortune, can change an entire defense like a Marvin Jones Jr. And Georgia and Alabama ain't letting you get that. It's not happening. 
unless there are sweeping changes to the system as we know it. And we get clued in and brought into the bigger table with the bigger pile of cash, which again, I feel like that has to come in order for the sport to survive. Otherwise, it will turn into women's basketball. And you won't watch. It's our, well, Most people won't. No, I agree. And that's where, like, I, the diehards in, in Tallahassee, everywhere, in the college football footprint, the Southeast, some parts of the Midwest, Texas, Oklahoma, and then, you know, pockets of the West Coast, they're going to continue to watch. But that's not what ESPN cares about. That's not what the networks care about. They know that they're going to have those people. But these deals that they're signing with the conferences are for such high amounts of dollars that they expect the country to watch it, not just the swaths of diehards. They're yeah. not paying for the die. They know they're going to have those. Well, those guys were coming along for the ride no matter what. Agreed. And so it is in their best interest to influence the conversation to bring it to a more equitable existence. That's what I'm hoping. The money will drive it. In a weird way, right now, money is driving the sport away from us. Correct. Away from Florida State. Correct. I believe the money will drive it, it around back the other way because they need competitive balance and they need to reclassify. Well, you and I have agreed on this for a while, and I've said this is where we we were headed towards the iceberg for a long, long time. We've arrived there now. and that's it's why the grant rights sucked. And it's not real. Well, but I, listen, that's a nuanced conversation, too, that you know there was not a lot for anybody could have done. I mean, you weren't going to get an ESPN deal without it. So you go independent. Okay. Well, of course they could have and made plenty of money doing that. Well, now you're arguing individually. Sure. Not collectively as a conference. Oh, I would never argue collectively as this conference. Uh, no, no sir. I know. But listen, we got beat to the punch on that. I we mean, did. there was another week. And really we lost. Do. Well, we lost. Baron, they made a bad call. Man, but the ACC wasn't in a position where we could do this. It's I know. I know. Get sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> to the now. Yeah. To the now. But what sucks about that is it could very well end up and I guess I'm going to bring it all the way back to the beginning. It could end up costing Mike his job. This stretch in time in the game with what we can and cannot do, it could. And I hope not. I hope not. I hope, you know what I hope? I hope he band-aids the hell out of this thing. I hope that he's able to get around some of his problems, which are personnel-related, meaning people he's hired or not hired let's put it that way and some of it is of course totally out of his control i mean COVID's totally out of his control also when you're a first year coach with the early signing period you get screwed so he had back-to-back -back kicks to the cojones most people don't have to deal with that. everybody had to deal with COVID, but not everybody has to deal with all of that at the same time they're bringing in a new coach in an early signing period so that sucks he got he got screwed yeah but then, then you marry that with all of what we're talking about here. You're like, man, it just may not work out. It may be that we're four or five years in, and you're like, well. And that's why I wondered what the expectations were. I think Mike's a good coach. I, I hope it doesn't. And I, when I, when I talk about band-aiding this, he's going to – because we're not going to be able to win over the best of the best, as it was just proven out, in recruiting high school, you're going to have to win the transfer portal better than most. Better than most. Yeah, agreed. And they're shifting that focus, at, I don't think, in perpetuity. But certainly they did a great job this year because they know that that's a different conversation for kids who don't necessarily command the type of NIL dollars that mm -hmm. a 17 or 18-year-old would. Now, I think that's going to change, though. I think the priorities of all schools is going to change. If you can find a multi-year stud like Caleb Williams, who ends up following Lincoln Riley out to USC, then I think those kids are going to command quite a bit of money. But... I think the long-term question becomes if you've got, this is like a summer economics that I took oversimplified management software program, right? And so you only have X amount of resources and dollars and how much do you want to put in research and development and marketing and all that kind of stuff, right? Well, if you've got an extra $2 million, do you devote that to a staff member, a support staff member, or a player? This is the conversation that we need to get comfortable with because our resources are so limited that what do you choose? When push comes to shove, well, would you renew Mike Norvell with a bad record over the next couple of years, but increase the amount of NIL once this loophole gets closed that we can openly give to players through the university, through the programs mm -hmm. of, of the university and Apex and boosters working together? Is that more important than reshuffling coaches every two and three years? Yeah, I, I feel like in a way it might shield him because you go well, long term with this guy that you think would be efficient Spend the money on the players. Yeah, it, it's it's an interesting conversation, and it's why I said that it's not so simple. Like, you, you gave the other side, and that's fair. And I'm only presenting that, unfortunately, there is the other side, which is that mm, 
people get antsy. Uh, seven to five and sub 500 gets people very antsy. And you don't typically have amongst most fan bases uh, a degree of patience that would allow your scenario to play out. It doesn't typically exist. And once there's noise in the system, as there were, as we say, then that it quieting that is extremely difficult. Well, we got to take a break. But uh, Tom, I'll answer your question in a second. Not Tom Lang, but Tom Hayden. Uh, because he's, well, I'll get to it. He's talking about a standard from the 90s, which is when I was in school. When you, yes, I get it, but that's not, that's not realistic. It's not realistic with the college football landscape we're describing. Well, and uh, one more question, I guess, for the break to think about. But what is the value of an assistant coach who's a good recruiter anymore? I mean, you know, somebody who's a bag man. What's with, I mean, do you really need that type of coach anymore? Or no, but do you, you, need... Be, you need a guy who can get some players. I don't care how he gets them. Yes, but what is the value of that anymore no, in no, the no, world no, of no, the no. NIL? Well, right, the right, handshake right. deals, now who it's cares? Above, it's above board now, but what I'm saying is some things don't change. If you're a position coach, if you're Ron Dugans, you better bring in some damn receivers. I don't care how, but you better. And he's not. And that's why people got pissed off. Now, I like Ron, but that's why that conversation exists. But if you send Ron to Miami with, you know, $600,000 And he doesn't come offer, back with anybody. Well, now that would be that would be trouble. Uh, Jeff Cameron Show, 93.3 Real Talk Radio, War Chant TV. Your local news now. A caller who threatened to blow up a historically black university in Florida, one of numerous threats made against schools across the nation, described an elaborate plot involving seven bombs hidden in duffel bags and backpacks around the school's perimeter. In a 20-minute phone call, the caller said the bombs containing C4 explosives would be detonated. At least a half dozen historically black universities in five states in the District of Columbia received bomb threats Monday. And at least a dozen more schools received such threats on Tuesday. Authorities found no bombs after extensive searches. Investigators have identified at least five persons of interest. In addition to Florida, threats were sent to schools in Arkansas, Delaware, Georgia, Kentucky, Louisiana, Maryland, Mississippi, and other states. The bomb scares come less than a month after a series of bomb threats were made to multiple historically black universities on January 4th. This is Rachel Lene with your Real Talk 93.3 Local News Update, brought to you by Macklemore Systems, Tallahassee's go-to Mac store. Check them out online at macklemoresystems.com. This is meteorologist Paul Trombley with your Real Talk 93.3 weather update. Scattered thunderstorms likely this afternoon, otherwise cloudy skies. Daytime highs approaching 67, northwesterly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. Cloudy tonight, scattered rain showers likely, lows around 40. Chance for scattered showers tomorrow. Highs level off around 53. Sunshine mixed with clouds at times. This report is brought to you by the Lawn Johns. For all your landscaping and lawn care needs, visit thelawnjohns.com. Right now, 68. What do you need tires on? Your car or truck? Tractor or heavy equipment? At Nice Tire and Auto Service, we have tires for all these needs. And we service your vehicle from air conditioning and computerized alignment to oil changes and everything else under the hood. Call Nice Tire and Auto today at 574-4100. That's 574-4100 for your scheduled maintenance. National accounts welcome at Nice Tire and Auto Service. 4792 Bluntstown Highway, just west of Capitol Circle. If you weren't the owner of Gordo's and all those wonderful restaurants, Eddie, what would you be doing? You know, I, I think I'd want to be a, I'd want to be, I don't know what I'd want to be, a boat captain or a cowboy. You know how to use a, a lasso? No. You'd have to do that if you were a cowboy. Yeah, but I've never even been on a horse. It's not my place to be on a horse. I agree. And the horse thanks you. Gordo's bringing the flavor and flair of Cuban food to Tallahassee since 1996. It's Congressman Michael Waltz on The Greg Tish Show. Good morning, Congressman. How are you doing? Hey, doing well. Again, just what you have to go through day in and day out. I don't know how you have hair left or like Matty Rowe, just completely bald. Hey. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> And the irony of it all, the progressives are the tail wagging the dog. This whole bipartisan White House is a joke. Mm. We're just watching them you know, eat their own. The Greg Tish Show, Monday through Friday, 6 to 9 a.m., only on Real Talk 93.3. The Jeff Cameron Show is a production of the Warchant.com Multimedia Network. Check out Warchant.com today for the latest news inside Florida State Athletics. That's Warchant.com. Now, back to Jeff on Real Talk 93.3.
Speaking of which, have you ever been concerned about taking too much risk in the stock market? Have you ever heard of the rule of 100 or 100 minus your age? This is a rule of thumb that can help you estimate how much investment risk you should take based on your age and or stage of life. Let's say that you're 65. Take the number 100 and subtract your age, 65, from it. Your age, meaning the number, 65% is the amount of your money that should be safe, guaranteed, and protected. The leftover number, 35, or 35%, is the amount you can keep in the stock market, maybe in good dividend-paying stocks, mutual funds, something along those lines. If you'd like a simple and easy-to-read report on how much risk you're currently taking, whether you're age 45 or age 85, call or text Pete Tyson from Preservation Financial Group. The number is 850-523-6118. That's 850-523-6118. Pete will give you a no-obligation, easy-to-read report on your current risk level. That's Pete Tyson with Preservation Financial Group online at preservationfinancialgroup.com. All right, back to the questions I said I was going to answer. I, uh, Tom had noted that he was here in the 90s. The standard is domination. Anything less than that is a failure. I'd rather spend $10 million on a championship basketball team than spend $10 million on an Oklahoma State pile of crap. Now, I like that Tom references Oklahoma State's annual 8-4, and 9-3 and three existence as a pile of crap because that's very much to the point that I was making. If that's now what we are, and that is the new standard, has collectively the fan base, the donors, the boosters, the alumni, have they accepted that, and will they view the games through that prism? So when you lose to Wake Forest, so long as you then beat NC State, and then perhaps lose to Clemson. So long as you beat, you get the point. And you've completed your eight and four, nine and three campaign. Will that warm the cockles? Will you then go, we did it. Mike is operating at peak efficiency. Florida State's where they should be based on the new normal. Because if that's the new normal, we're going to lose a lot of people. There are a lot of fans that won't make the trek to Tallahassee to watch a annual eight and four, nine and three campaign. You'd lose more people if you just decide to burn it to the ground in, in favor of other sports. That's correct. It's a net negative. So speaking for warchant.com, I hate the idea. Hate it. Got to pursue football excellence. You do have to pursue football excellence. It's a football school. And uh, I agree. Uh, I, I, I sure surely hope uh, that we end up with something that allows us to dream big again. I'd like to dream big again. For now, I agree with you. You can't dream big. They're not there. So you can't snap your fingers and make it all go away and make it better the way we wish we could. And we have to, again, kind of piecemeal this thing together a little bit, uh, piecemeal this thing to get together a little bit, because you, you end up having uh, the inability to recruit elite players. Thus, you cannot be elite. But elite is where we want them to be. Right. Well, this is where I think this particular period of time from February through kickoff of the great Duquesne game that we will see in August. What direction one. the athletic department takes under new leadership, the board of trustees takes with the new chair, got a new president here for a full academic year, well, full calendar year, I should say. The pitch they make with Mike Norvell in tow, the pitch they make between now and kickoff is critical. Because I think you can go to FSU alumni with desperation in mind. I think you can pitch that and not seem weak because it's the truth. You got to bring the facts to the people. Yeah, we we'll need do. more. And you, however you fundraise, and there are a lot of smart people, including Peter, who was on last night. Mm -hmm. He's raised a lot of money for a lot of different purposes over his business career. Whatever that secret is, that secret sauce for pitching, you better take jars of it with you because we need it. And that's what's critical right now is the fundraising. Yeah. It's a little bit of a chicken or the egg argument here, though, because those people of which you speak, the uber rich that are willing to part with their hard earned money to help support their beloved Florida State football program, do so and are inclined to do so and are motivated to do so by wins, by seeing a program that is moving in the right direction, that there is appreciable growth 
that they can witness. Right. And the pitch that he made last night, Peter, is you've got to spend money to make money. You've got to believe. Because if you're going to wait around for a national championship before you spend, then you're going to be waiting. No, I agree with that. But that's a tough thing to be able to compellingly ask people to do. The fatalist in me says that even if you can convince them to give of said money, there's not enough of those people to compete with the Georgias and Alabamas. Yeah, considering they have a $30 million head start with a TV contract. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So that's the fatalist in me that says, well, good luck. All that work won't get you to where you want to go. It's a start, though. Hour number two, fourth coming. Stay with Jeff Cameron Show, 93.3 Real Talk Radio and War Chant TV. Friends at ISF work hard to help their clients solve the future. ISF is an integrated IT and management consulting firm located right here in Tallahassee, serving clients all across the country. With the new year upon us, ISF reminds you to create a clear strategy, optimize your process, and modernize your technology to meet all your goals in 2022. For more information, visit ISF.com. That's ISF.com. ISF, solving the future. Stuck in an expensive timeshare contract and feel like there's no way out? I'm almost at $10,000 in four years. I've never traveled anywhere. They made this sound that it, this would be a really good deal, that I could go anywhere, anytime I wanted to. That never worked out. I'm Chuck McDowell, CEO of Wesley Financial Group. I've helped thousands of people get rid of their timeshares. I know all the tricks because I'm embarrassed to say I once worked in the timeshare industry. We save suffering timeshare owners millions in debt and maintenance fees. When you're approved as a client, I guarantee you a 100% success rate. We'll get you out of your timeshare, eliminate your payments, and get them off of your back permanently. I honestly would recommend that you call Wesley Financial. They will help you. Call Wesley Financial Group now for your free information kit. If they can't get you out of your timeshare, you'll pay nothing. Call 800-600-9595. 800-600-9595. That's 800-600-9595. Well, so far this month has already been a long, cold year. But nothing breaks up the cold like a cozy, warm fireplace in your home from Hearth and Patio. You may not know this, but many of today's modern, environmentally friendly indoor fireplace designs offer amazing energy efficiency. And when you get a new fireplace installed by Hearth and Patio, they will also service the equipment to make sure it lasts for years to come. Something else you may not know, Hearth and Patio can also repair your existing fireplace. I'm going to read you a recent review from a real customer. Donna says, our gas fireplace stopped working at a time when we experienced our coldest weather. I called other companies, but the earliest they could send someone out was 10 days. Then I called Hearth and Patio, and they had a technician at my house the next day. He not only was friendly, he fixed the problem and never tried to sell me something I did not need. It was so refreshing. I would not hesitate to call Hearth and Patio again. So the moral of the story is, when you need a fireplace repaired, replaced, or installed, just call Hearth and Patio at 727-4282 or find them online at hearthpatiotallahassee.com. There's fun to be had every night at the Corner Pocket. Take home prizes on Trivia Tuesdays and Beer Bingo Thursdays. And kickstart your weekend with Martini Fridays. Plus, happy hour runs every weekday and game day specials every time the Knolls take the field. Watch all the best games at the Corner Pocket's Vegas Wall. Featuring 560 inches of flat screen TV heaven. Oh, really? The best food, the best drinks, and the best place to watch all the games. Tallahassee loves the Corner Pocket. Coming up next, more of the Jeff Cameron Show, live and local on Real Talk 93.3, WVFT, Greta Tallahassee. Breaking news this hour at townhall.com. I'm Bob Agnew in Washington. President Biden is cheering the latest jobs report. Our country is taking everything that COVID has a throw at us, and we've come back stronger. I'm pleased to report this morning. Many of you already know that America's job machine is going stronger than ever. Bernie Bennett has a closer look at the numbers rising despite the Omicron variant of COVID-19. U.S. job growth blew past expectations in January, brushing off a record-breaking surge in COVID-19 cases nationwide that loomed over the economy as it threatened to sideline millions of workers. The Labor Department said in its monthly payroll report that payrolls in January rose by 467,000, easily topping the 150,000 jobs gain forecast. The unemployment rate, which is calculated based on a separate survey, 
ticked up slightly to 4%. As correspondent Bernie Bennett reporting, Pennsylvania and New England expected to end the day glazed with ice, compliments of the winter storm that's left destruction and traffic delays in its wake all the way from Texas through Ohio. In Cleveland, Eric and Lori Parrish told WEWS-TV they tried hard to catch their flight to Las Vegas, but to no avail. Here's their advice. Double check, triple check. <laughs> call us, you know, get a hold of somebody. Don't just depend on the email. Even though I tried to call, but yes, there was at least like a 30 to 45 minute wait. The same thing's happening at airports, New York City, Boston and Dallas. Senator Lindsey Graham of South Carolina warning any Russian invasion of Ukraine will imperil U.S.-Moscow relations for years to come. It's clear to me that if there is an invasion in Ukraine, uh, it will be almost impossible to have a normal relationship with Russia uh, by the Congress and future presidents. On Wall Street right now, the Dow Jones Industrial Average is up by 60 points. The high-tech Nasdaq up by 272. More on these stories at townhall.com. This is Sebastian Gorka, and I want to invite you to join me for a powerful travel opportunity that will likely become the highlight of your year. I'm headed to Israel in November 2022 for a 10-day Stand with Israel tour of the key sites and best places meant to give you an unprecedented view of a world you've likely only read or heard about. Together, we'll uncover key geopolitical insights as we unpack Israel's significance on the world stage. You'll return home empowered by the experience. If you've ever dreamt of visiting Israel, this is your opportunity. Come with me in 2022. For more information, call 855 565 5519 or book online at Stand with Israel Tour dot com eight five 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 six five fifty five nineteen or stand with Israel Tour dot com. Hi, I'm Jeff, founder of Witch Witch Superior Sandwiches, and I'm here to tell you about our signature witch, the Wicked. Why call it the Wicked? Some say it's Wicked Tasty, some say it's Wicked Large. One thing's for sure, with oven roasted turkey, ham, pepperoni, roast beef, and bacon, as well as your choice of three cheeses, it definitely takes you from Wicked Hungry to Wicked Happy in just a few Wicked Good Bites, only at Witch Witch Superior Sandwiches. On Wednesday, the Wicked is just five bucks. Five meats, three cheeses five bucks live and living color and totally free subscribe to war chant tv on youtube the digital home of warchant.com from the practice field to pregame and the phone calls afterwards war chant's youtube channel is home to live programming like seminal headlines wake up war chant the jeff cameron show as well as trench talk a live q a with Knowles offensive lineman Devonte love taylor just search war chant on youtube and click or tap the subscribe button that's it it's totally free war chant tv on youtube just another reason we're the ultimate seminal sports source Broadcasting live from Florida's capital city, this is the Jeff Cameron Show, brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness on Real Talk 93.3. Now, stop what you're doing and listen closely. It's time for the Jeff Cameron Show in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Four at uh, nine under, sir. Yeah. I noticed that yesterday. Shot a seven under round, but they move around. Yeah, they play three different courses. Yeah. This yeah. stupid thing. I know that they're, you know, cross promoting and they've got a lot of groups to clear. I don't like it either, Tom. I like golf and I like the setting and I do watch it and all the courses are beautiful. But in terms of the, the makeup of a tournament, I don't like that. Yeah. I don't, I, come on. don't call it the Pebble Pro Am. Call it the Pebble Spyglass. Yada, yeah, yada, yeah, yada. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Also, you know, I get what's going on there too. 
I don't need to see fat ass Chris Berman hit a golf ball. Stop doing that. Stop like moving around cameras to Is see. Is he these still loops. notable enough to get camera time? I don't. I hope not. But every time I turn on that, I'm like, look at this. Sorry, fat ass. I don't need to see him hit a golf ball. Let's go. Just put it on the pros. You don't need to show anybody who, other than the pros. Don't show me whomever. This it's soap always, opera king over here hitting a golf. Stop it. It's always been a tough event because they bring on Clint for like two hours and that doesn't go well ever. Well, I don't think they'll bring him on now. Oh, you bet. On Sunday, you watch. He'll be in the booth. <laughs> oh, man. He was given a Lifetime Achievement Award this week because he does do a lot of philanthropy which through this great, particular. Great. That's great. But they give him, I mean, carte blanche. Yeah, I've been to Carmel where he lives. It's a hell of a place. He's been there, too. <laughs> a long time. Uh, yeah, I, dr I drank some wine in Carmel. I was hoity-toity. Having a good time, buddy. And it wasn't Vino Friday. It was just hey, a, <laughs> hey, all righty. The <laughs> countdown is on. Oh, man. Anyhow, Florida State's own Jonas Blix is why I bring it up. Come on, Jonas. And that dude is one quality individual. He is so fun to talk to. He is down to earth. He's smart. He's interesting. And you watch him play, and you're like, I can play around with Jonas Blix. Like, he doesn't hit it very far. He's not real accurate. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of wonder how he's on the tour, and I'll tell you how he's on the tour. He does not miss putts. That dude is a putt and Jesse. For all of the hitting it short and wild all over the lot, if you give him a putt from inside of 25 feet, it's going in. It's uncanny. He just makes putts. That's it. What a hard, what a difficult existence. Imagine trying to score when you don't do anything well except putt. Well, I think that um, That's a it doesn't chip away at anything that, that inside. He just expects to make it. You know, if you're a trapeze artist or, right. or a yeah, Walinda. Can't fall, Tom, can't fall. Like, not once. You no, can't screw up one not time. Not one time. That's your ass. The old man did one time oh, in South yeah. America. On film. I've watched it lots of times. Mm -hmm. You see it start to get wobbly. Like, oh, there he goes. He never, <laughs> another, yeah, he never had another crack at it. No, you don't get a second chance when right. you fall off a tightrope from the 20th story. That's a toughie. Which I could be mesmerized by forever. If anybody's walking across anything and there's a chance of death, I'm watching. I'm watching. I, you've got me. I, who was it that uh, did that about 10 years ago? Was going to do the Grand Canyon? It was like going across a part of the Grand Canyon. So they had to walk for like an hour. That's a long walk. What are we doing? You got zero margin for error and you're walking for an hour, my friend. You were locked in? What? They had me. Yeah. And I, I admitted on the air. And it might have been uncouth of me, but I said, you know, I'm, I'm rooting for him to fall. If you're a dumbass and you decide to walk across the Grand Canyon on a tightrope, I'm rooting for well, him to fall. Well, you know, that sounds harsh, but how many people turn on that channel and say, ooh, yeah, I hope he makes it, you know? Nobody. They all want to see him fall. It's like, uh, now, once he falls, then you're like, ooh, that sucks. I hate that he fell. And I hate myself. And, well, you know, I don't know. There's, a, self, there's a self loathing that goes yeah. on. With that. When I see him fall, I'm like, oh, he fell. How about that? Damn, he's dead. That sucks for his family. And then I move on. I don't spend a lot of time on it. Except, you know, subsequent radio segments. I'm just saying, that's, I'm being honest. It's, a, it's an insight into the way that people view these things. If somebody, I'll ask you this, and, and you're probably nicer than I am. Uh, or at least you care more. Yeah, it about, depends on the day. It does. And it depends on the subject matter. But let me ask you a question. If somebody said to you, yeah, I want to uh, jump into a, a massive tank. Say it's like, uh, I don't know, uh, 700 yards long. Okay. So it's, it's that big. It's seven football fields long. A pool. Okay. All right. And they're going to jump in. And in that tank that is 700 yards long and however deep it would need to be sufficient to keep this thing alive, there's a great white shark. Do you tune in to see them swim unfettered, or are you looking for the shark attack? Uh, I don't tune in. I'm just saying, if you did, you would be, you, come on. You want to see the shark attack. You're not like, hey, I can't wait to see this guy get mauled, but you're kind of like, eh. I just, I don't know. That, that, would be, that would be a tough thing. You would force me to tune into that. <laughs> I'd be like, man, I can't watch this. <laughs> it's just too much. Well, what I'm saying is, you know, thin the herd. That's all I'm saying. Thin the herd. Yeah. Yeah, Caster where a guy does, uh, got what he deserved. Yes, There's no problem. Yes, yeah. Well, I'm not saying I wanted to see him attacked by dinosaurs. 
which is what a cassowary is. See, like I would pay, not pay. You'd pay, pay for pay, a guy. Pay, pay is too much. Yeah, to see a guy get eaten by cassowaries or killed. By no, cassowaries? but I would. I a trophy hunter. Oh, I want I'd, them all to die. I'd like that to be on a channel. Yeah. I think we should create that television channel. <laughs> yeah. Just on loop. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, when the lions catch them. Now, I would watch that trophy hunter if they didn't have a weapon. Try and find a way. Now that would be compelling. Whoa, that is crazy. There's a yeah, yeah. Go against the odds. See how you do. Brian writes, is there any chum in the water? No, I'm not going to do that now. Now you are intentionally creating the shark attack. I'm I'm saying that like if this guy's effort is to swim from one side of the 700 yard pool to the other and make it, and he just announces that this is what he's going to do. I'm going to do it. Ah, oh, you watch me. I'm going to do it. And he's got sponsors and everything else. And it's going to be put on. Okay. All right. I'm not watching to see if he makes it to the other side. I'm watching because I want the shark to attack him. That's all I'm saying. I'm like, with each stroke, I'm like, where's that shark? Where's that shark? Come on. If the shark gets him in the first half of the tank, Pepsi would be the sponsor because you just pan over the tank and it would look like the Pepsi logo. Oh, my God. (laughs) (laughs) We were talking during the break because of the last hour's conversation about what's reasonable to expect for this program. And it's really the question that hangs over. It's the, it's sort of a pall that hangs over the program's head currently. It's like, if you decide to micro uh, conversate about a, a season, you could be missing out on the much bigger picture. You could be missing out on the greater conversation. But I think the only way to keep your sanity is to watch for the marginal growth that gets you to a happier place and not really contemplate that you may never get to the end of the rainbow and find the pot of gold with the way that college football is currently constructed. Like maybe we can't uh, return to that neighborhood as I like to refer to it, but we can have nice things. You can't have a Ferrari top, but that's a really nice Honda Accord leather even. So that's kind of like how you end up having the conversation. And then you're saying, but, but I, well, I enjoy the Honda Accord and it's nice that I have a car and it's reliable transportation. I really want the Ferrari and I can never have the Ferrari the way things are set up. This is nonsense. It occurs to me yeah. that as you're talking about this, that if you're a fan of another ACC program, not named Miami or Florida State or Clemson, you know, anybody who's had the history. Yeah, you're, that's your existence. You're like, hey, welcome to the neighborhood, yes, guys. Of oh, course. look of at that. Course. Now, now you've got a problem with the way the system is constructed because now you're on the outs. You're like, we've been for decades. But I think what's interesting is, while that person may have a point, that we don't like it. We don't like it very much to, to feel like a Wake Forest does. Like they are, they are hitting their ceiling right now, and they feel pretty good about it. But after the new car smell wears off, I'm sure they're going to hate it and say, well, what's next? There is no next. This is as far as we can go. Mm-hmm. The problem is the pool is, is shrinking so small that I do think there is a course correction for the game coming. Yeah, well, that is the hope. That is the hope amongst every fan base that is not amongst those from Alabama, Ohio State, any number of others that can afford uh, to play the game, afford to play the recruiting game, afford to play the NIL game, to outbid your greatest competitor for the creme de la creme of high school football. So if you're not in that elite group and you can't do that, then you have to sit back and say, okay, well, this is our new lot. And what it's done is it, it, it's, it's uh, in a weird way, it's expanded the lot, the lot in life, right? So what you're talking about, we weren't part of that. We could thumb our noses at Virginia because they were never going to compete for a national championship. They, they were fine. We're like, well, good. Live with your eight and four and occasional upset of us. Good on you. Must be really special for you to have won that game against the mighty Florida State. Enjoy it for a little while. It doesn't happen often now, does it? Yeah, we could do that. But now we're them. Now we're the, oh, Jesus, got to accept eight and four, nine and three is a top end kind of season. Now, I don't know if this is legal. And I'm talking post Florida legislature loophole closed. And now the university can work with the boosters, can work with the Apex program. Mm-hmm. Everybody's on the same page. Mm-hmm. Raise tuition. There oh, you go. good Christ. You there can't you go. Stop it. There it is. Stop it. You already know how I feel about the uh, <laughs> well, when modern we were there, state of affairs at uh, the university level. It's ridiculous. When we were there, it was Screwing like people for the rest of their lives. I think it was like $300 or $400 a semester, and that would get you the right to have student tickets at a certain allotment, right? So it was already paid in. 
bump it up to twenty five hundred dollars a semester. And there you go. People are in their sixties trying to pay off their education because of this pay for play nonsense, where you're not really getting educated. You're just giving them a ton of money, and they make sure you don't fail out. What's also interesting is at that trustee level, is like, do they have a conversation about do we really need that new chemistry lab or do we need a safety? As I think we need a safety. <laughs> You know, yeah. I'm sorry, uh, Dr. Van Gogh. No, we're we're going to have to hold off. Goldsby is who you're referencing. Dr. Goldsby is who you're referencing in the uh, chemistry department there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Legitimately. Is that right? Yeah. He's Never great. Told, I went to physics. He's great. You'd like him. Really smart. Uh, Valker Crede was my teacher. Well, I'm telling you, he's really smart and really interesting. And All right. Well, Goldsby, stand down. Well, no. Uh, he will not. <laughs> now, he also wants to win, so. Unless you come up with a chemical compound that makes us quicker, stronger, faster yeah. than any other program in America. Perhaps he could. We need, you don't get the lab. The uh, lab is not yours. <laughs> hey, so uh, Eric donated to the cause. And uh, forgive me, did I gloss over something? He is saying, wait, 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 Jeff, we are just going to gloss over that I hate that man without so, a story. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, we have a DVR function on YouTube. It's a beautiful thing. So a lot of people will join the program late and watch it from the start. Oh, and right. so he's talking about Zubin Mahenti from the first hour. Oh, gosh. Okay. That's, I was like, what are you talking so about? So sometimes you'll see comments. You say, what the hell? It's because people are watching on a delay. They're using the DVR function on YouTube, I which is a great it. thing. It's I great get thing. Yeah, yeah. I never knew that. So you're going to have to. So what about the six o'clock Sports Center appearance that you did with yeah. Zubin? Mm -hmm. Has you leaving yourself feeling that way? You can share it or not, but Eric, uh, he's ponied up to ask the question. Well, I, I thought he made. Uh, some outrageous uh, assertions about Jameis Winston at the time. And so it, it, yeah, there was an inference that uh, it, it really, it went on from, a news format, not his personal podcast where he went bitching and complaining on ESPN.com. Yeah. Listen, I, I, I just thought that this happened a lot back when I was doing all of those sports center hits. And when I did, I'll tell you who was good. I'll tell you who was good. I really enjoyed I went on College Game Day, the, the radio version of College Day, Game Day, uh, well, Yep, several mm -hmm. times. And uh, what's his face? Trevor Maddich was great. Ryan Rosillo was great with me when I was on with him. Yeah, you guys just found a way to not talk about analytics with uh, Trevor. Well, that was kind of funny. Yeah, but we even went, yeah. But he was great. I mean, he allowed me to air. My, Numbers never won a football game. Uh, a map never helped you find your way. That was your, yeah, but I, so. That's right, yeah. yeah. So. That, that that was interesting. I mean, that that you know, I enjoyed going on those programs at that time, and it was even funny when I went on with what's his face, who I made fun of, and text and he texted me. Yeah, uh, Matt Barry. Matt Barry. Because yeah. you guys are wearing the same thing. We were wearing that the exact awesome. same shirt. I'm vain. Look at you. Yeah. I was making fun of his vanity for his uh, perfect hair, and he was in town to do college game day on the radio, and much to my chagrin, or much to my funny bones like I uh I got done with the segment and an unknown number texted me and I, I'm like who is this and it was Matt, it was Matt Barry texting me who was listening to the show in like a cab and and then was like oh you just make fun of me and I was scheduled to be on with him the next day that was funny and when he showed up I was wearing the, the exact same, same shirt. sweater the same undershirt with the collar all of it it was amazing. I was I wearing a sweater? I, I thought it was just a dress shirt. I think it was. I think there was a combo going on there that was the same. It was uh, multiple art articles of clothing. Yeah, it was yeah, tremendous. It was tremendous. Yeah. And he had a great sense of humor about me making fun of him. He and did. at the end, he said, and by the way, my hair is perfect. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which I gave him credit for. I was like, yeah, well done. But Trevor was good. Trevor was great. He because you brought up that what Feinbaum I ripped, said. I ripped Paul Feinbaum. And well, what did he say? And you came with the receipts. And I did. And then he was like, well, that was wrong. <laughs> You shouldn't have done that. <laughs> yeah, that was those were interesting times. So there's your answer, Eric. He'll get that about an hour from now yeah. once he catches up. Uh, thoughts on Duffy playing this year to answer a question uh, from Jamie? Uh, no, I wouldn't think so. Uh, probably not. And that's and, and I would like not to have to play him this year. How about opening day? <laughs> well, literally, he's going to. It's Duquesne. You're going to see Duffy on opening day this oh, year. Oh, well, he'll get his chance in the four games you're allowed to play without losing yeah. your red shirt and all that. Sure. Yeah, he'll get a chance. But I'm talking about as the starter, no. Or as a, or even significant playing time in any meaningful game. No. But then again, that's the other conversation. This uh, is part of spring, though. You get to, to mine and see what these kids can do.
yeah. newcomers from transfer portal destinations and the class. Yeah, I'm really, 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 really hoping that you get a, a, a transfer after spring uh, to be a viable backup uh, to uh, Jordan Travis, who, uh, unfortunately, I mean, through no fault of his own, is he's been uh, injury prone, as they say. It's Jeff Cameron Show, 93.3 Real Talk Radio and War Chant TV. What's important when shopping at a gun store? Let's start with a friendly and knowledgeable staff. Then add top-notch service, great selection and pricing, and a personal shopping experience only found at a locally owned and operated business. At Red Hills Arms, they're right on target. While other gun stores come and go, Red Hills Arms remains Tallahassee's go-to local gun store for all your firearms needs. Stop by today and get welcomed in my family. Applications, onboarding, payroll, termination. Business owners and managers, you know these are the processes that take away too much time from what you do best. But what if there was a locally owned, responsive solution that would charge you a fraction of the big national payroll companies? Sound too good to be true? It's not. North Florida Payroll Services is Tallahassee owned for nearly 15 years. And in that time, their prices have never changed. The reason North Florida Payroll Services can do that? Exceptional customer service that constantly evolves with the latest technology. From application to termination, for turnkey service for your payroll and HR services, trust a Tallahassee expert and save yourself time and money. North Florida Payroll Services, online at NorthFloridaPayroll.com. This is Kyle, service manager from Barano Heating and Air. Schedule an appointment from your mobile device to learn about our total comfort service program with guaranteed same-day service, 15% off necessary repairs, and $25 berry books to use towards air filters and other products. Turn to the experts at Carrier and Barano Heating and Air any day, anytime, anywhere. Online at baranoac.com. Florida license, CAC 1816-186. Your home is where your memories live where you laugh and where you love. We understand the importance of the valuables under your roof, tangible and intangible alike. So no matter what's around the corner, we'll be there offering you and your family the support that's made Florida Farm Bureau Insurance a trusted name for over 75 years. You deserve more. You deserve a promise. I'm Andy Cohen with Florida Farm Bureau Insurance. Please call me at 850-671-FARM. That's 671-FARM. Hi, Taco. Hey, champ. How you doing? How you doing? Pull up a pillow. Haven't seen you in a couple of days. Hey, something's different about you. That's right. My people took me to Tally Spay, the affordable spay and neuter clinic on West Tennessee. Tally Spay? Isn't that the place where they... Yeah, they're a low-cost, high-volume spay and neuter clinic. So you're saying you've had some work done? I did. You'd think I'd be depressed, but... Truth is, I don't even miss them. All I know is my family is much happier now that I've been altered. My people even brought Mr. Jingles to Tally Spay. Tally Spay, a low-cost, high-volume spay-neuter clinic open to the public, serving Tallahassee and the surrounding areas. How you feeling, Mr. Jingles? Leave me alone! Ugh. You're right, he is a lot nicer. Go to tallyspay.com. That's tallyspay.com. Siri, tell me a joke. The past, present, and future walk into a bar. It was tense. All jokes aside, the trained professionals at Mac and More Systems are serious about Apple products. For all your Mac repairs, call Mac and More Systems at 894-3622. 894-3622. We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com. The Jeff Cameron Show brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness. Two Tallahassee locations, Midtown on Thomasville Road and Northside in the Village Common Shopping Center. Online at orangetheoryfitness.com.
birthday again, Jeff. Can I get another good nose? Choo choo, high country, yay sausage, hat trick. Good nose, Russell, and happy birthday. What's the hat trick? Is that an old school thing? I don't remember what the hat trick is for him. Russell will probably tell me. I know Choo Choo, High Country, and EA Sausage. I don't know what hat trick is. Uh, Ryan, our friend Ryan, who was in the chat, but also on Twitter, sends to me a reason to celebrate, and that is that Joe West has officially retired. You know, yeah. there's a part of me that's bothered by this because he got out. He successfully made it with the most uh, games ever umpired by an umpire. That's the whole, that's the crusade he was on to set that record. But it's not just that he got out without ever being fired, which he should have been. And if I was being more cynical, his fat ass got out alive. So, you know, I thought at some point one or the other would happen. Boy, Eric is going to howl at that an hour from now. <laughs> Uh, man, that bothers me. But he did. He successfully made it despite being terrible at his job. It's the strongest union in all of sports, MLB Umpires Union. It's something, isn't it? That you could be that bad at your job and nary a penalty. You'll still be there. You know, they always say, too, that if you're bad, uh, as it relates to the old Quest Tech system, whatever it's yep, called now, yep, that you won't be able to call uh, playoff games. And it's like, BS! I see Angel Hernandez in the League Championship Series all the time. What are we doing? Joe West is there. All the favorites. C.B. Bucknor, all of them. Really quick while we're on the uh, lockout situation in Major League Baseball, the MLB Players Association today rejected the league's request to involve federal mediation in bargaining. An expected decision the players delivered one day after Major League Baseball formally proposed the process. Two months after implementing their lockout and just two days after committing to players that a counterproposal would be made, the owners refused to make a counter and instead requested mediation, according to the MLBPA. After consultation with our executive board and taking into account a variety of factors, we have declined that request. They're going to screw it up, man. Yeah, pitchers and catchers were due what? Uh, 10, 12 days from now, something like that? Well, they are, and they've already said that spring training is going to get pushed back in all likelihood or infringed upon. And I do like, so now the powers that be who write and write well and insightfully about Major League Baseball. So whether you're talking about a Buster Olney or a Ken Rosenthal, Joe, Piz Joe Pizanski, the guys like that, right, who are really good about baseball, they're... Uh, because they both act as uh, journalists who cover the day-to-day -day operations of baseball, the goings-ons, if you will, and have the status to be able to write uh, opinion pieces and are asked to do both in their role, um, they're, they're going on the attack. They're coming out at baseball saying, can't happen, guys. And it's funny because in a lot of ways what they're doing is they're trying to tell baseball, we're here to save you from yourself. You're already declining rapidly in the eyes of your consumer, at least in terms of getting new eyes on sets and seats, butts and seats, and kids on the diamond, right? Getting kids to play the game, which is the number one way to grow a sport or sustain a sport, is just to get kids to either play or watch a game, which fewer and fewer are doing now. You can't afford another impasse like this. You can't have it happen. It cannot happen. So whatever you got to do, Get to the getting. And those columns are everywhere right now. It, it's almost like a, a slice of what watching the game is like right now. This this particular labor negotiation. Uh, Buk Shiambi coined the phrase. Who I love. Yeah, and he's got some thoughts on gambling in baseball. Like gambling might save baseball because of the time between pitches. Perhaps he's not wrong. Yeah, in-game betting on it's balls and incredible. strikes. like Everything, yeah. yes. Uh, it takes too long for nothing to happen. That's that's baseball right now in the eyes, especially of what you're trying to do, which is appeal to the younger consumer group. And the NBA does it well. Oh, the NBA has got its own set of problems, too much social media uh, consumption, highlight consumption. Not the, the actual, kids don't watch the game. The ratings aren't good, but the, I mean, across the multimedia landscape, they're healthy as ever healthy as any sport. You know, that is fascinating. And I've watched this through my children's eyes. Like Bryce loves the NBA. And I've told you he's glued to it. He watches every night and he loves, uh, 
Terrence Mann, and he watches, you know, he, he really flips around. And he's got a good handle on all the teams. He's pretty insightful. I mean, if I asked him something about the Denver Nuggets, he could tell you something substantive about the Denver Nuggets, which is crazy. So anyhow, when I when I talk to him about baseball, he goes glossy-eyed. He's just like, I'm like, he likes Shohei Atani. Mm-hmm. He thought it was smart for MLB the show to put him on the cover, which got announced this week. And it is smart. And it's the first. And it's international. And that's good. And he likes, uh, he'll watch, you know, he watched the World Series. He watched playoffs. He, he, and if he comes in and I'm watching my Pirates, he'll watch. He'll be like, oh, dad. <laughs> that sounds right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, dad. He'll walk in. It's the fourth inning, six to nothing Dodgers. He's like, oh, dad, why are you still watching? You never know, son. It's an unpredictable game. We've got to get uh, his pitch count up. See if we can get to that pin. <laughs> yeah, when you're not hitting worth a damn, yeah, and it's yeah. like, hey, he's at 82 pitches. Yeah, in with, the fourth. Uh, yeah, yeah, the yeah, fourth. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Quote, unquote, Ken Rosenthal, if it happens, meaning baseball loses games, the outcome will be inexcusable for Major League Baseball, a sport competing for market share in an ever-expanding entertainment universe. Fans will gladly turn to other leagues and outlets if what was once a $10 billion industry can't get out of its own way. And the antipathy towards baseball will be particularly acute in the middle of a pandemic that has lasted for nearly two years, exhausting the patience of millions of people. Yeah, that is 100% accurate. All of it. All of it is just like in bold type, right before this dumbass commissioner's eyes. Worse than all of sports. See, I'd be a terrible columnist if I covered baseball at this particular stage because my column every time would be, what would you expect? This is what they do. End of my column. There it is. And you go behind the paywall to see that because they couldn't even get it right in the midst of the pandemic once they agreed to no fans in the stands. Mm-hmm. They couldn't get the thing started by July 4th. Now, they had the opportunity of a lifetime to be the first sport back to have uh, the American holiday during the pandemic, July 4th, full of baseball, a return to quasi normalcy when we were all yearning for it, watching best ofs and yes. classic games, Desperate. talking about our stressors on the air rather than sports. And they couldn't get it done for the betterment of the world. <laughs> I mean, really? <laughs> no, I know what you're saying. People's peace of mind. Yep. They couldn't come to the table and agree on that in a timely fashion. It well, was late July by the time they got that thing started ridiculous so rob banford the commissioner who i call the worst in all of sport is the one who initiated the lockout he got crushed when he did so by telling everybody it was quote unquote defensive and he said uh the other quote that made me laugh was he initiated the lockout and then said well we locked him out because we're hoping to jumpstart the negotiations (laughs) okay okay so that didn't work yeah tony clark's not much oh he sucks he's awful the union is terrible It's terrible. It has been for For 30 years. a long time. There is no winner in this. They both suck. Yep. That's the column. It drives me. They both suck. They both suck. It drives me nuts. You could reach Jeff Cameron at Jeff. Yeah. Manfred, by the way, rose to power because he was considered to be, uh, a a, 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 what was it, Uh, an expert labor negotiator. That's how he rose to power. Well, what the hell? He's done anything but. Uh, this is an ownership group and a league that empowered the Will Ponds, who were uh, yeah. grifted by Bernie Madoff in the Ponzi scheme, to be the chief financial officer of baseball. Yeah, what would qualify me more to be in charge of the money than being grifted by Bernie Madoff? Sure. That, that gives me a qualify. Yeah, that's what this sport is. Um, Manfred earns $11 million a year with annual raises built into his contract through 2024. Man, come on. And a pitcher with a four ERA can earn $15 million a year to be terrible. It's crazy to think. I mean, they amassed eight points. Oh, well, I'm not going to go through all these numbers. It's just, it's going to make you sick. It's, it's, sons of bitches better get it right. Just go. all of them, though. This is yeah. not this is not a man for, for me. This is they, well, no, they I, always have. They they walk hand in hand into the abyss together. Yeah, I know. But I loathe Manfred. He every misstep, every incessant ev- mistake, every day he says something dumber to divide these groups further. And I agree with you. Tony Clark is no picnic, but oh. he follows Don Fear in so many ways. Donald Fear, who I used to want to see 
physically fall down the steps and break his neck when he was going to baseball games in now, the midst of all. I did. We understand the hat trick because now we got three. <laughs> it's the we Jeff Cameron three. Show, 93.3 Real Talk Radio, War Chant TV. Your local news now. The Tallahassee Police Department says it has arrested a second suspect in connection to Saturday's shooting at the intersection of West Tennessee and Basin Streets. Montero's Telfair 24 was charged with attempted first-degree murder, robbery with a firearm in possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. The shooting happened after the victim was driving home from a concert at Baja's nightclub when he rear-ended a BMW while waiting to turn onto Basin Street. The driver of the BMW got out of the car, robbed the victim, then went back to his car to grab a gun from the other suspect. The suspect then shot the victim, hitting his driver's door window and right arm. Police later used surveillance video to pinpoint the BMW's tag number and determine the owner of the car was Telfair. When police showed the victim a photo of Telfair, he told him he was 100% certain this was the person who shot him. Telfair was arrested and taken to the Leon County Jail this past Wednesday. This is Rachel Linnae with your Real Talk 93.3 Local News Update, brought to you by Macklemore Systems. Tallahassee's go-to Mac store. Check them out online at macklemoresystems.com. This is meteorologist Paul Frobley with your Real Talk 93.3 weather update. Scattered thunderstorms likely this afternoon, otherwise cloudy skies. Daytime highs approaching 67, northwesterly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. Cloudy tonight, scattered rain showers likely, lows around 40. Chance for scattered showers tomorrow. Highs level off around 53, sunshine mixed with clouds at times. This report is brought to you by the Lawn Johns. For all your landscaping and lawn care needs, visit thelawnjohns.com. Right now, 66. Our friends at ISF work hard to help their clients solve the future. ISF is an integrated IT and management consulting firm located right here in Tallahassee, serving clients all across the country. With the new year upon us, ISF reminds you to create a clear strategy, optimize your process, and modernize your technology to meet all your goals in 2022. For more information, visit ISF.com. That's ISF.com. ISF, solving the future. If you weren't the owner of Gordo's and all those wonderful restaurants, setting, what would you be doing? You know, I, I think I'd want to be a, want to be, I don't know what I'd want to be, a boat captain or a cowboy. Do you know how to use a, a lasso? No. You'd have to do that if you were a cowboy. Yeah, but I've never even been on a horse. It's not my place to be on a horse. I agree. And the horse thanks you. Gordo's, bringing the flavor and flair of Cuban food to Tallahassee since 1996. Here's what you missed on The Greg Tish Show. A woman only identified as Mrs. Wong posted on Chinese social media. She had gotten locked down after a first blind date. She discovered that their date's community had gone into swift lockdown after visiting his house for a meal. This absolutely has to become a romantic comedy. Lockdown love. He was looking for Mrs. Wright, but he found Mrs. Wong. Lockdown. <laughs> Starring Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. The Greg Tish Show, Monday through Friday, 6 to 9 a.m., only on Real Talk 93.3. The Jeff Cameron Show is a production of the Warchant.com Multimedia Network. Check out Warchant.com today for the latest news inside Florida State Athletics. That's Warchant.com. Now, back to Jeff on Real Talk 93.3. Eleven o'clock basketball. Tip. You like it a late night pick? Mm. You like it the beer? You like it the beer? I take it the beer. That guy was great. I miss him. Oddly, I do too. First class is always free at Orange Theory Fitness. Go check it out. Get in shape. Let's go. Get it together, everybody. Come on. Let's get to take it over to Orange Theory Fitness. First month is free with the purchase of a heart rate monitor. You can do that. That's how you see it working. Science back. Look at me getting better with my physical fitness. Look at me. My Don't cardio be is better. You get that heart rate monitor. Let's Come on. go. Let's go. See what it's all about. It's great. Orange Theory Fitness, first class free. Go. And uh, you'll thank me. You will. You'll go and you'll say, you know what? I loved it. I loved it. I want to do it again. Well, then sign up for another class. All right. I think I will. OrangeTheoryFitness.com to learn more. Uh, happy birthday in advance, Eric 
Angel. Enjoy the trip to Los Angeles uh, as he is off to L.A. to watch his Bengals. I actually have a question for him because he had the hashtag who day, which is what, you know, yeah. it's kind of like what the uh, Saints, Saints do. do. Who started that? I don't know. And who copied off of that? Because whoever copied off of it should should not have done that. So if the Cincinnati was first and then the Saints did, then only one fan base should have that annoying chant. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. So if it's yours, it's yours. And the Saints are stupid for copying you. But if, you know, the Saints did it first, then you can find something better. I've often wondered it. I think you have as well. So, yeah, that's good. Hey, look at that. Sean Corbin went nuts today uh, in the Shrine Bowl, or at least had a, several several good runs in the, in the Shrine Bowl. Yeah, you know. it was last night. I did not watch night. it, but, yeah. I didn't watch it either. Uh, but I am, he was a good pickup for us. Solid, I like him. Solid pickup. I like him. Hmm? <laughs> oh, man. Did I miss this? I am going to be upset if that's not right. Uh, I'm, you know, the Coca Cola building bottling plant on St. Michael Street. Yeah. Uh, behind where we used to have yeah. the office, the, it's in the shadow of the bulldoze building that we used to work in. Yeah, I I, I think that uh, people are concerned that it might be taken down. You can't do that. You can't take that building down. No, what? It's an historic building. What's going to go in there? A bank? Something annoying. Remember that uh, didn't uh, firm put together a, th a thing that you could go over there and there was like music and stuff for a brief period of time. There was, there was a little stretch there that was yeah. really good. And then um, I don't know what's. Going I liked on. our building except for the fact that it probably is already it probably shortened me. our lives. Yeah, I'm dead. Probably now. shortened our lives. Uh, that area was perfect because we could walk around over there and it was great. It was. It was really weird. I love weird. We all do. Congratulations to uh, non-weird FSU legend George McLeod who has had his jersey retired at Florida State, number 21. By the way, the McLeod jersey, the very one that he wore as a player here, the number 21, that, that look, I love that look. Mm -hmm. That is a classic look. We need to don those bitches again. Yeah. Those things yeah. are awesome. All time good. Well, you know, it, it took everything I had not to bring up uniforms last night in the uh, in the forum with the chair of the oh the, you wanted to uh air the grievances in a backwards way i did when uh, he brought up how the commander's name is stupid and i was like well those uniforms are worse they look like a low-level collegiate program and i was kind of like maybe we could segue mm -hmm. this but there was no bait taken you want to sit across from uh bot chair peter collins and say to peter can i talk to you honestly for a second I i'd like him to allow me to head up a, a subcommittee on the uh the true garnet i want to be part of this committee the true garnet slash uniform question yeah. Wouldn't that be a great committee to serve on? I want to serve on that committee. I want to be part of the solution. I want us, you and me, specifically you and me and nobody else, to make the selection for our next uniform. Maybe our pal Tarif. Tarif Knockout. He can be involved. Absolutely. You're right. He's been on this. He's passionate as we are about this particular issue. He is. Issue. He is. I mean, I, I, I was originally screaming from the mountaintops about the numbers, and, mm -hmm. uh, and, and that has always been a problem. But uh, you... Your crusade has been about the color of garnet. Yeah, and the also shade of, the hue of garnet. And I was a detractor the moment that they did the ignition tradition thing because we look like Boston College with the gold numbers. Right. I, the, from the, the gold, moment that they did it at yeah. Clayman Plaza, I came back. I we know. did a podcast immediately. Yes, me yes. and Malagon did. And mm -hmm. it was like, no, this is wrong. Well, the yellow numbers, they hid those from everybody. I didn't even get to see those. When I went over and they laid them out in front of me when I... Yeah, they right. put him out there claiming God Plaza. Rest his I, soul, Monk Bonasort said, "What do you think?" As we were sitting there talking, and I said, "This is all good because I did, did they didn't show the gold. They didn't have the gold numbers." I thought, "Okay, well we're good." Then when those gold numbers, I was like, "Oh, they pulled the wool. It's not what we do." And they also changed us to purple. It's just tough. Nike did. Yeah, yeah, that, and we didn't have the backbone to say no. Our current gar garnet's fine. Mm -mm. it's not terrible you could even see it at hauser if you take a look at what we wear which soon we can uh it'll be exciting you know the hats and the numbers versus if you, if you don't have something fall upon you while you sit in the dump that is dick hauser <laughs> stadium then you'll be able to watch our baseball team <laughs> i got him to admit last night that it's on the list oh sweet jesus yeah they're not Successful. gonna build a new <laughs> i just got done talking about they're standing water for no reason at all year times round, yeah. in perpetuity standing water it could be the dead of summer, 105 degrees for 10 days straight, 
No rain anywhere in sight, although that wouldn't happen in Tallahassee in the summer. But the point would be, if that did happen, it would not be enough to evaporate the uh, numerous pools of water that just sit uh, amongst the seats and corridors of the baseball stadium. Wouldn't you call that then uh, just a pond at that point? It's frustrating. Because it's permanent. It is very frustrating. It angers me. That water may be older than me. There are weird creatures living in there. I mean, it's, it's yeah, new life. But if you look at our hats and numbers and stuff versus the backdrop, the backstop, different colors. I mean, well, come on. Mm -hmm. And the backstop is correct, unless they repainted it this offseason when they put in the wall padding. Very excited to have wall padding. Uh, aren't you? Aren't you? Man, that's a toughie. Can you imagine? And and, and by the way, I, again, I'll, I'll address this because I did take a shot at Florida State Baseball's on the, on the Twitter feed when they said, hey, we've got the new padding, whatever. It's not their fault. they got to carry water. It's not their no fault. No pun intended with the was, previous. They constantly have to carry water. But it's not their fault is right. Like, But I wanted it. I wanted enough people to see it. And so they were very excited about putting the padding out there. And I wrote, I guess. But it was sort of a, <laughs> I mean, like that's sad. That makes me mad for them. For them, it makes me What do they put in the new chain link fence you know, in right field? <laughs> Hey, guys, we got new baseballs. Can't wait for the season. It's Jeff Cambridge on 93.3 Real Talk Radio, War Chant TV. Every great construction project, whether it's a new addition or a renovation, starts with a plan. At T-Spark, we are excited when our clients contact us to assist with that plan. Through our team of architects, draftsmen, engineers, we can help you with your project's planning and design, potentially saving costs in the long run. Whether you have a residential or commercial project, we look forward to working with you. Call us today or visit us at tsparkconstruction.com. License number CGC 1525336. Tallulah CBD and Juice Bar on Market Street and in Bannerman Crossings has all your Valentine's Day flowers and chocolates. But I'm not talking about red roses and heart-shaped boxes. Shop for the newest Delta 8 vape and flower products, plus Delta 8 chocolates for just $3.99. CBD massage oils, CBD bath bombs, and a selection of enhancing products to really feel the love this Valentine's Day. Come see the ladies at Tallulah for everything you need to love your Valentine. When you are approaching retirement, there are a lot of questions to answer. Do you have enough money to fund your income for life? How should you claim Social Security? And what's your plan for health care and long-term care? Pete Tyson and Preservation Financial Group are here to help you preserve your retirement. The team at Preservation Financial Group can help you get organized, guide you through critical retirement decisions, and create a comprehensive income plan designed around your needs. Don't leave your retirement to chance. It's crucial to understand and address relevant risk before you retire. To schedule a free, no obligation consultation, reach out to Pete Tyson and Preservation Financial Group today. 850-523-6118. That's 850-523-6118. Or visit them online at preservationfinancialgroup.com. See Nice Tire and Auto Service at 4792 Bluntstown Highway today. The ASC trained technicians at Nice take the guesswork out of fixing your car. That's why wherever you see the Goodyear sign, you'll find what you want in tires and service. From preventative maintenance to a major overhaul and everything in between, you name it. Plus, Nice's services are backed by a nationwide limited warranty. Stop by Nice Tire and Auto Service. 4792 Bloodstown Highway, just west of Capitol Circle. Live and living color and totally free. Subscribe to War Chant TV on YouTube, the digital home of WarChant.com. From the practice field to pregame and the phone calls afterwards, War Chant's YouTube channel is home to live programming like seminal headlines, Wake Up War Chant, the Jeff Cameron Show, as well as Trench Talk, a live Q&A with Knowles offensive lineman Devontae Love Taylor. Just search War Chant on YouTube and click or tap the subscribe button. That's it. It's totally free. War Chant TV on YouTube. Just another reason we're the ultimate seminal sports source. The Jammin Show brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness, two Tallahassee locations, Midtown on Thomasville Road, and Northside in the Village Common Shopping Center. Online at orangetheoryfitness.com.
Tom even has no, no, you don't, do you? You don't have any hockey. No, there is none. A little I mean, respite for the Olympics. Yeah. Uh, well, it's the actually the All Star game that they put in oh, for the Olympics. That's so right, that's, yeah, that's now right. apparently they're doing some stuff with the All Star skills competition, which is usually fun. Yeah, it is fun on the strip. Really? They're doing something on the strip. Nice. Yes, and then there also is an event where players uh, instead of the accuracy competition, they're playing blackjack. There are cards in a grid, and so you're going to shoot the puck at this grid to try Sweet. and make twenty one. Yeah. Yeah, so that's at least worth uh, you know, going to YouTube and checking out if not watching live. Uh, the Olympics starts today. Yeah, the uh, opening ceremonies were today. It's just because I was up early, like you, scanning around the uh, the channel guide, and I was like, oh, opening ceremonies. Uh, so by the way, let's see here. I'm pulling this up. This will be interesting to see if they can get through this. You know, it's the China's no, uh, it's the zero tolerance COVID Olympics. So good luck. I don't think they just won't report it. <laughs> That's not going to work. Uh, so minus 28 degrees uh, at one of Beijing's um, park, the, the Genting or Genting Park, if I'm mispronouncing that, I'm sorry. It is minus 28 degrees where they're going to be skiing. In one of those. I saw Holy that moly. Andrew Marshand, who's one of the voices of sports media coverage, um, mm -hmm. he wrote an article, and in the article it says essentially that uh, – this is the Olympics in which all people covering the Olympics say we cannot wait for Paris for the next Olympics. You think? We just want to get through this one. I would also note that uh, the first thing you should be doing is looking for the times as uh, we get a little, I mean, any chance to watch uh, the best sport in the world that isn't uh, a mainstream thing uh, is something that I want to do, which, uh, what's it called? The uh, uh, Curling. Curling, yeah. The, yeah. the rock. I'm going to watch it. I, just told I, I got a tough time because I had a really hard time with John Schuster, who was a choke artist uh, some years back. I guess that was eight years ago at the Winter Olympics. Just terrible. Tom, and then I'm, he I'm ended gonna, up winning a gold medal. Yeah, I'm going to send you a link. Uh, it's entitled How to Watch John Schuster at the 2022 Winter Olympics on NBC and Peacock. <laughs> <Is it really? laughs> that guy was so bad. So bad. They were in position to win. And there were like four different times and four different matches, and he blew them all. Like in spectacular fashion, where the the announcers, who were lifers in the curling world, I would mm. assume, are speechless, going, "Oh, oh no, what has he done?" But I guess he redeemed himself. Uh, what he's done is won the gold. Told him to suck it. Hey, by the way, if you really want to watch something special, you got to watch Brittany Bow at the 2022 Olympics in the speed skating. All right. Mm -hmm. Speed skating, uh, even the short track of the I long love track. Speed skating, yeah. but she's talented. Understood. Go Knowles. Unfortunately, the uh, the hockey won't be as uh, captivating this year, at least on the men's side. Now, the women's side, USA versus Canada, is going to be fun because you got the best out there. But on the men's side, it's you know, you know, there's a mixed doubles in curling. Is that right? Yeah. It's mixed doubles. Uh, North Florida Payroll Services, locally owned for nearly 15 years, offering payroll and HR services, including full online applicant onboarding and integration into payroll. Save your company money and headaches today at the North Florida Payroll .com. All right. So I went on, I already mentioned the college sports book. Go ahead. Hey, Big Daddy, having some red rushes tonight? We'll know in about 47 seconds. Big Daddy's done it again. Red Russians all around, Teddy. All right, Big Daddy. A couple things here. I did take Fresno State over Nevada tonight. It's a late night tip, 11 o'clock. So if you're up watching late hoops, maybe you want a little juice on the action, you can get after it and uh, have Fresno some fun. Fresno State, Nevada? Yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> well done, Matthew. Well done. Little Fresno State, Nevada, and uh, I like Fresno State. I'm gonna lay the nine. Looks like Nevada is gonna be without their two best starters, so I'm gonna, oh, right. you know, I'm gonna jump on that. And then I also, and I'm just I'm playing a hunch here, admittedly. So go with the number, but I'm gonna play the over 132 in that game. Over okay. 132, just a hunch. Very good. All right, I'm playing a hunch. So that's that's a game that you could pay close attention to tonight if you're having a beverage at 11 o'clock on a Friday. You're like, oh, they're getting ready to tip off. I did put a little pizza money on one golfer to win this weekend, and he was hanging in after round one, and that would be Ireland's own Seamus Power. Yeah, well, he was in the lead earlier today. Is he still? He's still. He is in the lead currently. By four? 
Director Matthew says. He well. is. He is at minus 14. He shot a 64 yesterday. He's six under today through 12. Okay. So Seamus Power, who's been consistently good for the better part of a year, uh, has played very well. Uh, Tom, just so you know, normally, normally I would be cheering you, uh, rooting for you. <laughs> okay. I would be, I want your guy to, to win so that you can win money and we can all celebrate that. But right behind him, and also having a good day, is my man Matthew Fitzpatrick, who I may have sprinkled a oh, little money okay. on to win the whole thing. So there we are. I was hoping you'd say Maverick McNeely because, like what we talked you about yesterday, uh, yeah, he only shot two under yesterday. Now again, they move around the course. They do. They, they do. Like if you shoot two under on the hardest course there, right, then you might be okay. Yeah, might be all right. But uh, I have him as a top five, and then I also bet Tringali top five, and oh, he was like dead last no, yesterday. Oh, <laughs> no, yeah, that's a tough. It's not going to happen for you, Tom. I uh, did it again. We got three more minutes. Also, that's the second time. Also, I've done Maverick it. McNeely is not going to do it for you unless he rebounds nicely because he is 100. Oh, he's tied for 47th currently. He's, okay. Tough. I need top five. I need one of those Matt Kuchar <laughs> magical Sundays, a little yeah, 63 little, in the morning. Backdoor top ten. Yeah, huh? right. yeah, yeah. Boy, yeah. we haven't seen an eagle on the 18th with yeah. reaching in two <laughs> since Matt Kuchar. Uh, it's is? a long tournament, though. You don't want the leader after two. Although two rounds becomes uh, two rounds becomes more real than three rounds if you have the lead. Remember when Lucas Glover was good at golf? Long time ago. Sort of. Yeah, he's not very good these days. Uh, either is Alex Cheka, who was once good at golf. Remember him? Oh, man. Mm -hmm. He was one of those. Uh, who was that guy again on that Ryder Cup team? Oh, yeah. It's yeah, like a Yarmo Sandling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Man, I, we were talking to Matthew and I were talking about this yesterday where we were talking about golfers and how that's the sport where guys go from being top 10 in the world to out of the sport. It can happen to the best of the best. And... I remember uh, who was it? Ryder Cupper. Uh, I brought a lot it, of them. Uh, no, I brought it up to you, Matthew. Uh, the Ryder Cupper with the jilted chip. The European <laughs> or American? Ooh. Oh, Hunter Mahan. Yeah. So how did Hunter Mahan go from being a Ryder Cupper World Top Five to out? Of, I mean, where's Hunter Mahan? He was ahead of his time with the flat billed hats. Now they all wear them, but uh, Hunter was the first to do that. Well, he also wore the M frames. Remember that? Mm -hmm. He was just like an ass across the board. I need to. I got the tack glasses in the car that I got for Christmas. I got to bring those in. Like when I'm angry and irrational about something, I just probably need to put those on. That's perfect. Maybe you'll see the eagle. Oh, you can. They give you a little magnet that's all gray, and then you put it on, and, <laughs> and the eagle comes to and life. There it is. Yeah. Infused is the confidence I didn't know I could possess. Excellent. And a hatred I didn't know existed oh, as well. Oh, man. <laughs> Ah, He's all, a pro in the pros it's department. It's all there, buddy. It's all there. Yeah, it's fun. Uh, other little pizza money bets, perhaps, uh, that I'm going to take a look at here. I like. I kind of like Seton Hall minus the six against Creighton. Is that a tomorrow at noon game? We've got a few. few that feels yeah. like a noon tip on uh, like Fox Sports 1. Uh, Rams first half. Mm, starting to look at those numbers. Next week will be the time for us to do that. We get a lot of fun numbers there. Uh, because you have oh yeah yesterday you gave us the like the touchback is plus 150 when you yes, play that the touchback was plus 150 i don't know if it's still on the board but if it is you got to get it also i gave you a punt to be down inside the five you remember what the plus what, 650 uh, plus 635 okay plus 635 still worth it so will there be at least one scoreless quarter in the super bowl not this one no if you would have said yes it's uh worth plus 360 Okay. So, yeah, I don't think so either. Boy, I would love to be at the sports book rooting on a punt as it's rolling down inside the 10 yards. It's, like, it's, it's on the 14th. It's like about to bounce to the floor. Yo, delay, get yo, get, That's at the five. You got to the four. <laughs> good work, fellas. Be good, everybody. Have a great weekend. Peace. <laughs>